Welcome to Bible Bits, where I tell you a story from the Bible, but make it kind of interesting. I don't have a clever stage name, so just call me Lemmy. Today, I want to tell you the story of Job. He gets his own book in the Old Testament, so he's pretty important. Before I start, though, I just want to say that I'm no biblical scholar. What I say should be taken with a grain of salt. If you have questions about the actual scripture, I recommend reading it or asking your spiritual leader of choice. On to the story. Job was a pretty chill dude. He was blameless and upright, and feared God and shunned evil. He had seven sons, three daughters, seven thousand sheep, three thousand camels, five hundred yoke of oxen, and five hundred donkeys, plus a boatload of servants. Basically, he was loaded. The Bible even tells us that he was the greatest man in the East. He was seriously super good. Like, his sons would have parties on their birthdays, and afterward, Job made arrangements to have all of them purified, just in case they had sinned in their hearts, and made burnt sacrifices on their behalf, which was totally normal for him. Anyway, one day, a bunch of angels came to see God, and Satan happened to come with them. So God asked, where have you come from? Because, you know, Satan didn't come to visit God too often. Satan explained that he had been wandering the earth, and God had to ask him if he had seen Job. He told Satan, he's like the best dude on earth, the best dude I got. Satan was like, nah, dude, he only likes you because you're coddling him. You make his life better, so of course he likes you. But I bet if you took everything away from him, he'd turn against you. Want to bet? God asked, then proceeded to give Satan permission to destroy everything that Job had, so long as Job himself was physically unaffected. Back on earth, Job's kids were feasting and drinking at their oldest brother's house, so they weren't there when a messenger ran up to Job's house and said, Look, man, the oxen were plowing and the donkeys were grazing, and the Sabians came out of nowhere and made off with them. They killed all the servants who were there, and I alone have escaped to tell you. And while the messenger was talking, another appeared. Oh, man, Job, look, the fire of God fell from the heavens and burned up your sheep and all the servants watching them and I alone have escaped to tell you. And while that messenger was still speaking, yet another messenger appeared and told Job, Um, so your sons and daughters were feasting when suddenly this mighty wind swept in from the desert and struck the four corners of the house. It collapsed, they're all dead, and I alone have escaped to tell you. Now, most people would probably freak out. And Job did, in a sense. He tore up his robe and shaved his head, then he fell to the ground in worship, saying, Naked I come from my mother's womb, and naked I will depart. The Lord gave, and the Lord has taken away. May the name of the Lord be praised. He proved Satan wrong, and his faith stood strong in the face of tragedy. And if you've ever heard the phrase, The Lord giveth, and the Lord taketh away, that's where that comes from. So then later, the angels came back to hang out with God, and Satan came too. God asked where he came from. Satan said he was wandering the earth. Then God said, So, Satan, did you see Job? He's still super awesome. Even though you destroyed literally everything in his life, he's still faithful to me. Satan, of course, couldn't be happy with this answer. Dude, a man will give everything he has for his life. That's why he still likes you. You made me leave him alone. But I bet if you take away his health, strike his flesh and bones, he would definitely turn against you. God laughed. You want a bet? Fine, go ahead, but don't kill him, okay? So Satan went ahead and gave Job painful sores from the soles of his feet to the top of his head. But good old Job just sat among the ashes and scraped his skin with broken pottery. His wife, tired of his shenanigans, was like, Dude, seriously? Just curse God and die already. He said that she was crazy, and said, Shall we accept good from God, but not trouble? Despite everything, Job did not sin in what he said. He was still chill in God's eyes. Job's three friends, Eliphaz the Terminite, Bildad the Shuhite, and Zophar the Namathite, heard about Job's troubles, and they decided to go see him. From a distance, they hardly recognized him, but then they all cried together and tore up their robes and sprinkled dust on their heads. They sat in silent camaraderie for seven nights and seven days not saying a word because they saw how great Job's suffering was. And finally, after all that time, Job opened his mouth and cursed the day of his birth. 
It's a super long monologue, and I highly recommend you read it for yourself. It's Job chapter 3. But basically, he was a little upset with God, as most people would be at this point. However, our good friend Eliphaz told him that he was being silly. Again, long piece of dialogue, so check out Job 4 and 5 for that. He talks about how mighty God is, and how mortals could never be more righteous than God, and how it's very important for God to test us. He tells Job that God is just trying to teach him a lesson, and that life will improve if he just lets it happen. And he ends with, we've examined this, and it's true, so hear it and apply it to yourself. Job is still a little upset about losing absolutely everything, so he goes on for two chapters in reply. He does, however, begin to pray to God that he can learn from this. But at the same time, he's wondering what in the wide world he did to deserve such punishment, since he did everything he thought he needed to do to be a good Christian. Luckily for no one, Bill Dad steps up to the plate to answer two chapters worth of why questions. He tells Job that they're too young to know anything, and that they need to keep God in mind always. See Job 8 for more. Then, Job talks for another two chapters, and then Zophar has to shove his nose into everything for a chapter, followed by Job for three. You see the pattern? This goes on until chapter 32, where they introduce a new character. He's been quietly sitting there, apparently. Not mentioned before this, you know, like a good character should be. Basically, the friends figured Job was actually pretty good, but this kid, Elihu, stepped in. He was angry because Job was being bad, and these three friends kind of got over it. Now, he goes on for a while, but basically gives his own opinion on everything that's been said. Read it on your own time if you really care. He spoke from chapter 32 to 37, so yeah... Then even God got tired of listening to these men bicker and calls out to Job. He's like, yo, bro, step off. I am the Lord Almighty, and y'all had better not question what I do. Look at the world. See what I can do? Don't mess with me. And Job replies, uh, I don't know how to answer you. Then God goes on about how great he is for another chapter or so, and Job repents and stuff. It's really great. The best. So after God's satisfied with the penance from Job... He turns to Eliphaz and says, Look, y'all suck. A lot. You didn't speak the truth about me like Job. So go sacrifice seven bulls and seven rams and let Job pray for you. I don't even want to hear your prayers until you've made that burnt sacrifice and Job prays for you. Obviously they didn't want to piss God off any more than they already had, so they did as he asked. Now God felt kind of bad for destroying everything that Job had, so he returned his fortunes to him. His brothers and sisters and everyone who knew him before this calamity came and comforted him and ate with him. Each one gave him a piece of silver and a gold ring. After that, God blessed Job more than he had before. He ended up with 14,000 sheep, 6,000 camels, a 1,000 yoke of oxen, and a 1,000 donkeys. And he had another seven sons and three more daughters. The daughters' names were Jemima, Keziah, and Karen Hebuk which is a really unfortunate set of names, but they were the most beautiful women in all the land. Then Job lived on for another 140 years, seeing his children and their children on to the fourth generation. He died an old man full of years. The end. I know before I go, all of the quotes today were taken from the New Standard Revised Version of the Bible, and I pretty much just googled Job, and there it was. Anyway, thank you for watching. Goodbye.